Hello and welcome to another episode from the Water's Edge. You catch up with us today a short way into a winter's day ticket carp fishing session on Cobble Acre Lakes. Now the reason I'm down here is because we've been dealt some really good conditions. We've got a real strong warm westerly wind blowing right into this corner where we are and I was actually only fishing this lake about a week ago and it actually froze over the lake completely. It was minus five believe it or not while I was out. I know that sounds crazy to people but we were out in that and that wasn't the good conditions but as we've been dealt like I said this big warm westerly the lake's brought out and it's probably I don't know it's probably four or five degrees warmer it's a big change and I think this time of year if you can get good conditions it's definitely best to pick and choose your days when you go just to optimize that amount of time you're there is good bite time so that's why we're down here today I'm in a swim called the snags I've had a word with Bob who's the bailiff here and also Nathan who I work with and this is one of the better winter areas as such they tend to come out from this swim quite a lot in these conditions and with this warm westerly blowing in over my left hand shoulder it's blowing right into this bank here and hopefully that's going to bring all the food with it and on a big warm westerly wind you want to be right where that wind is if the wind was the other way and it was a cold wind i'd be fishing off the back of it so hopefully today we're in a good area in some good conditions and that brings us on nicely to a little story actually before chris got down here with the camera I've had probably some of the more hectic five minutes of carp fishing that I've had since I've started. So I got down here just before it got light and I got the rods out in the spots that I know are quite good. One's in a little silty area, one's on a little gravel bar. We've got another one near a stump in there, so they're in good areas. And I got those out settled nicely. I was just then taking the first sip of coffee and the middle rod has screamed off. So we come out and struck that one, playing it. I instantly knew it wasn't one of the bigger residents, but was happy just to get that bite. Halfway in playing that, my other rod, I've heard the bobbin hit the top of the rod and that's gone as well. So we've had two fish on at once, a bit of a tussle, a bit of a struggle. Eventually we got those in, only just to slip the net under the second one. My third rod's gone. And unfortunately I picked it up and there was nothing there. So with all that going on in this win, my brolly's turned inside out and it was just all chaos broke loose. So probably for me and saving my face, it's probably good the camera wasn't here, but as a result of that, we've had two cracking little commons. They're not big, like I said, two smaller fish. The fish go much bigger in here, and hopefully, if we're lucky, we'll be connected with one later on. But they were great fish. In the winter, the, the condition of them and the colours come out, and it just looked really good. And I was chuffed just to get in there, in with the action, and get a fish on, on the bank before the camera got here. In the meantime, we've got two rods out now. This is now going to be the third one we're getting out. We're just popped on the bucket just so I can show you what I've got. I've got the same rig on all three rods just because I don't like to complicate things. I think all you need to do is get a rig that works. If you're happy with it, get out on the bank and use it. So let's have a little look at what we've got. On the main line, we've got a flying back lid. That's just because I'm fishing slack lines. I want to keep everything as unobtrusive as it is. Just get it on the bottom, out of the way, and hopefully you're not going to spook anything that's coming in. Onto a bit of tubing on this rod. One of the other rods I've got a fluorocarbon lead that I've made myself. I don't think that makes a difference, it's just as long as you can get your line pinned to the bottom. That then comes on to a lead clip setup that we've got. The rig I've chosen to go for is the multi-rig. Basically what a multi-rig is, is your hook sits on this loop section in here. You basically just have two loops at each end of your braid. And one of them you slide a little rig wing on and then your hook, and then your hook just creates this D at the back of it which you then have to bait floss your bait onto. So basically you'll thread and bait onto a needle, pull some bait foss through, burn that with a lighter and just blob it on. So your bait is actually blobbed onto a little bit of bait foss that runs on that ring. And then just underneath where the loop, I've stripped a little bit of the coated braid back and nipped on a shot. Because basically what this is, it just sits as a little pop up. And that will just waft off above anything that falls off. This time of year there's going to be leaves, twigs, there's going to be all sorts on the bottom. It's not going to be clean and perhaps it would in some when everything sort of died off. But there's going to be all sorts out of it. So this just sits above all of that and wafts above there nicely. I've got a little sinker halfway down just to kick that rig away from the lead and that as I said is really simple but for me really really does work. The hook you need for it, you do need to use a chod hook, one with an outturned eye because as it sits like I said as a pop up that bait sits off the back of it, you need it to sit in that claw manner so it's ready primed hopefully to get in the bottom lip. The hook holes you get are very very good. So that's enough about the talking, like I said I'm eager to get out there again with it all happening this morning and the other rods out there, I want to get this one out there fishing as well. But all I'm going to do, just before I'm casting out, I'm just nipping on a little bit of foam. And all that's going to do is just going to 
sit above it like that and then when that foam eventually melts and pops off the rig's just going to slowly settle and sit above anything there then that does give you another brilliant vocal point but that foam comes up and it tells you exactly where that rig's sitting so all i'm doing with the catapult i'm flicking i don't know 10 or 15 10 mil cells out over the top of that and that's what we had the bites on and that's probably what i'll be doing throughout the rest of the day we can change the color of the hook baits but apart from that i'm not going to change anything else just touching on what i just said with 10 mil cell is a brilliant change for your winter fishing 95 percent of the time 15 mil baits are what gets used do something a little bit different in the winter 10 mil baits i don't know why it just seems to work i suppose it's a little smaller and when they're not eating as much just gets the extra bit out of your fishing so i'm going to get this one out there now and hopefully we'll catch up with you again with a fish on camera just had a cracking run on the the right hand rod and after that little bit of excitement this morning as I said before Chris got it we're, we're into another fish and uh, this one feels slightly bigger I'm hoping it's slightly bigger obviously uh, coming down this time of year as you mentioned it's cold and you're happy just to get a bend in your rod but it's not been out there too long. He's going to try and coach this one. I'm worried that he's going to drift around this overhanging tree that we've got down here. He's getting towards the net now. I'm just going to step over here. He's putting up a good little scrap. There he is. There we go. Ooh, nice fish. Well, there we are. Give him a little time to rest. I like to just give him a bit of time to chill out before you get him out for the your pictures and whatnot. Just sort of calms him down, lets him recover. But he's a cracking fish. I'm just going to give him a bit of water and then we'll hold him up. A bit on that side. But he is a lovely fish. Fully scaled almost. He's got some great scale patterns. See if we can... We can get up and there we are. He's the third fish of the session for me. Two before Chris managed to get down here and now this one. But certainly if someone would have said to me, you're going to have three bites today, I would have bit their hand off before I got down here. It's not always the easiest coming out and catching these winter fish, but when you do, it's great rewards. I think they just look so much better in the winter. The colours come out a little bit better and it's just all the nicer for catching them any time throughout this daylight hours. We've got a bit longer left, so hopefully another bite will come. There's some fish in here. I'm not surprised the wind's sort of hacking in this corner. It's a real strong wind. You can probably hear a bit on the camera. But yeah, I'm pretty sure there's some more fish about. It's just a case of hopefully another one of these fellas come along and taking a little bite on what we've got out there for them. But hopefully we'll catch another one. Fingers crossed. Let's get this one slipped back. Uh, that rod's back on the spot, that's all free now, armed and ready. I'm just going to slacken this one off. As I said, I'm going to keep everything as loose as I can. I want to keep it, if I can, laying flat on the lake bed. So the bottom's going to be laying on the floor. Just set my clutch. And that should be free, good, hopefully, baited traps ready. But while I'm down here, just make sure that alarm's on. I'll show you where they're going. So that rod that we've just popped out is out just to what, out of this bay a little bit. Um, I've got them all in a line, you can pretty much say. We've got the right hand rod that we just put out. That's in a, a relatively soft area. And then the left, the middle rod is on a really, really nice silt patch, which I know from speaking to Bob that there's actually an active bloodworm spot there so there's plenty of natural food there so I think especially this time of year that's certainly why probably a lot of fish are getting caught off that spot so that one's deep deep in the silt but with that little multi-rig we showed you earlier I've just extended the pop-up to 
to sit up a centimetre or two higher, so I'm pretty confident, or very confident, that that's not sitting in anything. And we had, in our mayhem this morning, we had a bite off that spot, so I know that's producing. And then finally, the left-hand rod that we've got tucked right down where this wind is blowing is off this, this stump that sticks out, about a rod length off, because in the summer, fishing this lake, the lilies come quite a long way off that, so what I'm doing is I'm sort of guessing where they would be if they were up because there's still going to be the odd route in that and I don't want to be fishing in amongst that. So with that one, what I've done is I've just put it like a couple of rod lengths where I think the edge of them pads is and as that one goes down, that goes down a real crack. So I'm fishing over hard gravel with that, which you tend to find that any sort of lilies or anything, when they grow, they do grow from gravel. So it makes perfect sense that I'm in the right spot. So one on a gravel area, one in a deep active silt belt with plenty of natural food in. And then this one's sort of in between. It, it's not deep silt and it's not hard gravel. I would imagine feeling it. I'm obviously not down over camera, but I was going to guess, I would say that there's gravel underneath, but it's just a layer of, of silt just sort of on top of it. And that's where the rods are. Check all three. That one needs a bit of volume. And we're ready. So all traps armed. I'm going to head back into the bivy because it's Looking like it might drizzle, the sun's in and out, this wind's still blowing. I'm gonna pour myself a coffee and hopefully wait for another bite. Well, the right hand rod has gone off again. I've just about managed to get it under control. It went on initially quite a good run to start with. I haven't seen it yet. Oh, it looks like a nice fish. It looks perhaps a little bit bigger than the other ones. Nice tail just come up. But again, another cracking run. Well, it's a lot bigger than the others. Just bear with me. Just gonna step over the rods and grab the net. And as I was saying, it went on a really, really good run. I think just out of the blue, it's screamed off. And I really do think it's got something to do with those rigs and the fact that they're just so hard for them to get rid of. They sit there proud and waiting for something to come along. Ooh, he's giving me some real grief now. Try not to tang them under the other rods. He's nearly ready. I've started to get him under control. A brief glimpse of him shows me he's a pretty nice common. I'm starting to feel it now. The old, when you hook into a better fish, if you're not an angler, you might not understand, but we, an angler understand you know it's a bit bigger. And the heart does a, ooh, the heart goes a little bit. Let's concentrate. Get in there. Oh, wow. Oh. That is a proper one. You could probably tell I was getting a bit more excited on camera as that came in, because I knew it was a big fish. And it is an absolute cracker. I don't get to do that much big carp fishing. And uh, when a fish like that comes towards the net, it is mightily exciting. Let's see if I can hold him up. He is by far the biggest fish so far that we've had on camera. And to be a common this time of year, look at them colours. That is an absolute cracker. Calm down. I almost didn't believe it when I when I see the head come up. It was just it was massive, and that. I mean, that's, that's big to anyone standing, but like I said, for me, not getting to do too much this, that is such a prize. That is one of the best fish I've caught for an awful long while. What I'm gonna do is now I've had a quick look at him, we've got him out, we've got the hook out. I'm gonna pop him in the retention sling that I've got here. We'll get the camera ready, we're gonna go get the scales. I might even go and get Bob, because I'm sure he'd like to have a picture of this for his website. And we'll get some stills done before we slip him back, but what a creature. 
cracking carp. Let's get him in that sling and we'll get the magical scales out. Well there we are. Bob's just come round to help us weigh. It's gone 29 pound on the nose. One they call fungus. Bob recognised it straight away. But certainly for me, one of the prettiest looking fish I've caught for an awful long while, like I said. Not every time I get to come out and do some proper carp fishing. And that certainly is a proper carp. But let's get him back. We're not keeping this out too long. Need to get it back safely. Someone else can enjoy later on. Well, after the excitement of that fish, it's been about 30 minutes, 40 minutes perhaps since that, putting it back. It was lovely to see it swim off nice and strong. And we've just been sitting back, the rods are out and primed. It's sort of getting into the best time for carp fishing. We're not doing a night tonight, so I've got about 40 minutes to an hour, I would say, left this light. We're going to fish right into dusk. And hopefully, this is what they call the witching hour, so hopefully we've got a chance of another bite. But it's been really good for me, and me and Chris have just been chatting because we haven't done too many carp fishing videos, but we, we said this year that what we're going to do is we're going to join a big fish water. So that's coming hopefully in the spring and we're going to do a, a proper carp campaign. And hopefully uh, where we're joining has got fish to well over 40. So if we're lucky enough in a year to catch one of those, definitely you'll be ones to see it on here. But we're just a great start to perhaps getting into some bigger carp fishing. We think, having a look out of all the sea fishing, match fishing everything we've done we think that's probably the biggest fish we've had on camera so far so onwards and upwards from here just for the next hour or so i'm going to chill out watch the water and just pray for one more bite but it's been a great day regardless of what happens from here i'm sitting here a happy man Well that's it, time's up and it looks like we've timed it to perfection, it's now starting to rain. We fished on until it got just too dark to see and although it's normally a good time to catch, it just didn't happen, it went really quiet, and didn't see anything, no liners, but we can't complain at all, we've had a brilliant day, I've managed five bites since this morning and topped off with that beautiful 29 pound common to finish. So all in all it's a brilliant day's fishing and well chuffed with a result. I'm now going to head off home but as always I'd like to thank you for watching and we'll see you again on the next one. Thank you.